This is the iPhone 13, the non-pro version of the iPhone 13 lineup. And every time a phone manufacturer makes a pro version and a non-pro version, majority of the time, the non-pro version has a better value and it's best for most people. This video was made possible by OtterBox. So we know OtterBox is great for protective cases for many years, but OtterBox also makes some pretty nice accessories for gaming. So let's talk about a few of them now. This is the power swap battery for Xbox. This is a battery compartment that allows you to swap out batteries on the fly while gaming. These batteries are also rechargeable with a dock or USB-C cable. There's an indicator that lets you know the battery life at any time. Now for mobile gamers, this is the gaming clip. This is a simple clip for your Xbox controller it attaches like this and it holds your phone secure while gaming this is the easy grip controller shell which is an exterior shell for your controller it provides extra grip and protection during those long gaming sessions and lastly here is a housing for your controller if you want to protect it or take it on the go this is a wonderful way of doing it, it protects your controller and any accessories you may have all this can be found in the first link in the description down below from OuterBox. Between the Pro and the non-Pro, there isn't much different outside of a few things that techie people will get, like a high refresh rate, a zoom lens with macro, and the ability to shoot ProRes and RAW. Also, the Pro has a slightly bigger battery and more RAM. For day-to-day -day usage, I can use the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro, and my workflow and the way I use everything and the way I operate doesn't change one bit. So why spend the extra money on the Pro? With that being said, here is my long-term review of the iPhone 13. So in the hand, the iPhone 13 is a very comfortable phone. For me, it just feels right. So you have this squared off design, which I absolutely like that Apple now is going more squared than curved, which is really cool to see. You have a squared off design where it actually allows the phone to stand up on its own. It is just a this squared look, which I really, which I really dig. And then of course, everything else is pretty much the same. You have the lightning port at the bottom with the two speakers right here. You have this antenna window for 5G. You have the bigger power button here, and then you have your volume up and volume down, and then you have your uh, notification rocker. So the build is very familiar, but it's much more refined, just how the phone feels in total and how it feels all together. Now there are obviously different colors with the iPhone 13, and depending on which model you're looking at, all the colors are different. I do like this color. I think this is kind of a, it's not like a totally pink, but it's kind of like a, a, uh, like a soft pink, like a blush pink, which I think definitely does look good if, if you're into pink phones. Now something to note about the iPhone 13, is that the back is glossy and the camera housing is actually matte. When you compare it to the iPhone 13 Pro, the back is matte and the camera housing is glossy. That is one thing that's different. And obviously we, we talk about the lenses too. There's an extra lens on the 13 Pro. But for the layman's or for the naked eye, if you will, there's not much that is going to be different for most people. So I do love this size of a phone for a number of reasons. Number one, the phone is still relatively one-handed friendly. Um, obviously, you still may need to shift your hand up and down to do certain things, but for the most part, it is a one-handed phone. I can do a lot of things on this, on this phone with one hand that I can't do with larger phones. And also, the screen to me is big enough where I can watch content and I feel like the content is, is big enough where it takes up the whole screen and I, I have a good time watching it or if I'm playing games on the phone or anything like that. I think the phone is just a really nice size. As I said before, I don't like super big phones, so having a phone that it, I can put in my hand, but at the same time, it's a phone that I can still do content on, I can still upload videos, I can still play games, I still have a larger screen. I think this is just a great balance between size and pocketability and usability. So the cool thing about the 13 versus the Pro that the 13 comes with the latest processor. So as far as raw computing power, you're not missing out on anything at all. So I can edit videos, I can play games, I can do pretty much anything that I do on the Pro version on this phone here 
and this phone is hundreds cheaper too. So I get some of the same functionality, a lot of the same performance and things like that from the cheaper phone. Now, for people who use this phones, majority of people use social media, text, and then we do camera. So for those three basic things, this phone definitely does a great job at all three of those. Since I talked about the camera, we can dive into the camera. Um, the camera is just like an iPhone camera we've seen before, very simple. We have the point 5X, which is the ultra wide, and then we have the 1X, which is the standard wide angle lens. Then we have the video mode, which can shoot in 4K, which is definitely cool to see. And you can get actually 4K with higher frame rates. You can get better looking video, smoother video, and it shoots in HDR as well. So a lot of videos will be looking a whole lot better coming out of iPhones. Now, not much has changed on the camera side. I'm gonna flash up a couple pictures here so you can kind of see. For me, the big thing for the camera has to be HDR. I think HDR just looks a whole lot better on images, especially if you're taking a picture of landscape. You can see the sky pop, you can see the grass, you know, it's not crushed, the, the, the darks look good. And I think the iPhone does a great job at letting dark areas remain dark. Like some phones like Samsung, they will lighten the darker areas. This phone will allow the dark areas to sort of stay put. This camera's also great at taking pictures of motion. So a lot of phones like the Pixel has this shutter lag. When you're snapping pics back to back, it starts going pretty slow. The iPhone does a great job at keeping up with the action. Even in portrait mode, if something is moving, you can still grab a shot. And more times than not, it will still look pretty good even in portrait mode. Now, even with video mode, even though it's been the best for years, I think it's gotten even better. The, the cinematic mode, which is basically portrait mode for video, I think it looks really good for what it is. Now, one of the best things about it is that after the fact, you can adjust the focal points later on. Now, I have used this very phone and this camera to use some supplemental shots for my YouTube video, shooting B-roll or from out and about, and no one has noticed anything at all. With good lighting and a steady hand, this camera looks really, really good. And the audio is pretty good too. I would say pound for pound, this is the best camera system available. Yeah, I think the Pixel's portraits look better, and I think Samsung's video is really good and the stabilization is solid, but I think combined, when you take a look at this camera, what it can accomplish in total, there's not one weak spot. For iOS, the app library is amazing. And I know, obviously, we talk about apps all the time, but let me tell you, when it comes to just high quality apps, iOS still has Android beat. Listen, I love my Android devices, but a lot of apps side by side just does not compete. And a lot of companies, if they don't have like a big team, they'll build an iOS app first and then build the Android app. So a lot of times the iOS app gets a lot of the love first. Even Google apps are doing that too. Gmail gets more features before Android does. So that's just kind of one example. But I will say the app library is very nice on iOS. And then I really like Apple Arcade. There's a lot of really cool games on Apple Arcade. Yes, it is a paid service and obviously paying per month for games isn't really fun. But let me tell you, there are some games on here that are just fantastic to play that Android just doesn't have. So iOS 15 does still have bugs that needs to be ironed out. There's a lot of weird and wonkiness going on with the messaging system and I find bugs there and apps crash and things like that. So iOS 15 is a little bit buggy right now and that's kind of, uh, kind of a bummer because you get a new device, you start running into new bugs you didn't have for a previous device, but it's not the phone, it is actually the OS but it does, it does uh, have these problems enough where I felt the need to mention it. So battery life to me, I think is really good on this phone. I can take it off the charger around 7 a.m. and I'll say around 11 p.m. I start getting the messages that I'm at about 20%. Now I'm a very heavy user. Um, I am consistently on my phone. I may have a FaceTime call for 30 minutes or an hour. I do podcasts, I listen to music on Spotify. I do all those things that people will do on their phone that can take up a lot of battery. So, you know, for me, I think as long as the battery lasts throughout the whole day, which it does, I'm okay with. The Pro has a bigger battery, but I find pretty much the same battery life. The Pro Max gets more, gets about, about two or three more hours more battery life. But for the most part, I can't kill the phone in a full day even when I use it all the time, and I'm okay with that. I will say I do love the MagSafe system, and uh, MagSafe is the magnet system that is on the back of the phone that allows you to connect different accessories. So for example, this right here is a MagSafe battery case, and here it is. 
This MagSafe battery case will charge your phone just by attaching it to the back of the phone. If you attach it to the back of the phone, your phone is now getting charged. Now, I will say that the MagSafe works best when your phone's not dying, but you put it on before your phone's about to die and it kind of keeps your battery level at the same place if you're using it or if you're not using it, it will start to charge it up. Um, that's kind of how I use the battery pack, but there's a lot of battery packs out there. A lot of third party companies are making ones that are much bigger than this one, but yeah, I do like MagSafe and I like all the accessories that are coming out with it, including the charging puck that you just set down and the phone charges. I really like the MagSafe system. It's not new to the 13, but you're seeing more accessories now that the 13 is out that supports MagSafe. So rounding this review up, I will say that the iPhone 13 is the most complete iPhone that I have ever experienced. And I know it's the latest iPhone, blah, 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 but there is not a glaring issue with this iPhone. I, I have honestly felt like with most iPhones the last few years, there has been a glaring concern or something I really didn't like about it. But I'll say with the 12 and the 13, there hasn't been much I didn't like about it. Now, the 13 Pro does have the high refresh screen. We talked about that. The 13 regular does not. And I would say for the 12, the big thing for me was it didn't have a high refresh rate. And now you have an option for that, although it's not available on the standard 13. Many people can't tell the difference, so I'm not gonna harp on that, but I would love to see a high refresh rate on the 13 regular two and not just the 13 Pro. Anyways, if the 13 is not your cup of tea, we definitely have videos for the 13 mini, 13 Pro, and also the 13 Pro Max if you wanna check those out. Kevin the Tech Ninja here. Have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.